Are you confused on what to craft? Are you asking yourself, what should I be focusing on for my summoner? Today's video is going to explain that. What kind of current end game crafting should I be doing for my summoner? And every summoner is a little different, but I'm going to explain that today. If you like all my videos and like my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video, it comes up on your phone and notification drops down. Go, let's go, baby. Tip of the day. I've talked about this before, but this is in regards to cooking promotion right behind me. I suggest when you've completed level four promotion, it starts to get a little difficult. I mean, it's really easy, honestly, cooking is, but it's super easy when you use the guild shop. Go to the guild shop and click on the ingredients tab. Here you will find all types of cooking promotion support boxes. You can literally do this for every level of cooking promotion. But the first three or four are super easy. If you are trying to promote to level five, like I am currently, you want to buy the one that says cooking promotion support box four. You can click on the box and see that the materials are what you need for your promotion. It's honestly confusing because when you click on promotion requests and says cooking level five promotion requests, right? But you got to look at what is actually needed here so you can confirm what you buy in the guild shop. Cooking level 5 promotion request needs the level 4 support box. That will give you what you need. You buy that with guild coins. You open that box up in your inventory. And as you see, every single thing is done already for you. You just got to click, deliver, deliver. Click, deliver, deliver. Click. Oh, we're not doing this again. Sorry. Click, deliver, deliver. Click, deliver, deliver. Seriously, I'm done now. And just in the matter of 60 seconds, my promotion of level five is complete. The more you know. All right, let's get down to the real nitty gritty of this video. What gear should I focus on for my summoner to craft? I'm gonna break it down for you for Orbia, Cleef, and Kina. For PVP and PVE, I'm gonna give you a heads up too of what kind of mining materials you are going to need for the majority of the crafting of six star gear, for the specific sets that I'm telling you about for the summoner. You're gonna need a little bit of Mithrum, Platinum, Peridot, and Red Diamond. Those are all the blue quality mining materials you're gonna need. Just make sure to stockpile those. You're also gonna need a good amount of the purple quality of Tritium and Obsidian, and you're gonna need a ton of Topaz. So make sure not to sell those things or waste those materials on different things that you're not going to be focusing on. For Kina, you're going to need a tiny bit of golden aquamarine ore, just for the heads up. Now your main goal is to get level 7 blacksmithing so you can craft second awakening weapons and gear. Weapons do different things, sub weapons do different things, and each four set of each dungeon is different. They all have the same stats at the end regarding the main stat and the substat rolls. However, the bonuses for the weapons, the sub weapons and the gear are different. And just because the newest and latest raid is open, which is snake mommy, that doesn't necessarily mean that gear is best for your summoner. All right, let's get into Orbia. I'm going to start for PVE. For PvE, the Ruined Temple Staff is the best staff for Orbia. This increases monster attack, so if you are bringing a secondary damage dealer, this will be best for them. Because if you're Orbia, you're pretty much nuking stuff down anyway. You're not tanking with Cleef, you're the damage dealer. You're bringing a damage dealer, you're bringing a support, maybe you're bringing two supports, or you're bringing a Night Warrior, whatever. But PvE, Ruined Temple is the best staff. For Orbia's sub weapon, you can either go White Shadow Castle, this will decrease the damage taken by the summoner, or you can go Foggy Prison, it's the same thing. Unless this is a translation error, because White Castle first starts out as decreasing a tribute damage by summoner, but then when it hits 6 star, it changes to just decreasing damage taken, so I don't know if that is just a translation error or not but they are the same percentage of damage decreased. 
So if it is the same, you can go either or. Whatever's easier for you to get. You might have more crafting materials available for Foggy Prison than you do for White Castle. It just depends on the RNG of the drops. And for Orbius 4 set, what you want to craft for the earrings, the necklace, the bracelet, the ring, is Boiling Waterfall Naraka gear. This will increase the summoner's attack by 185. Now for Orbia PvP, for the main staff weapon, you either want to go Ruined Temple or Twisted Marsh. This depends if you're trying to do as much damage as possible as Orbia. Then you will want to do the Twisted Marsh, as this increases your damage in Arena and Battlefield, with Dark and Light Staff. If you're trying to decrease the damage that Orbia is taking as much as possible, then you will want to go Ruin Temple Staff because you will switch to Light Staff and decrease the damage taken by the arena. For the sub weapon, again, it's either Foggy Prison or White Shadow Castle. And for the four set, again, it is Naraka still, just so you do the much damage as possible from Orbia. Now for Cleef users, for Cleef PvE, definitely go the Ruin Temple Staff. For the sub weapon, just like Orbia, go either Foggy Prison or White Castle. Now for the 4 set, it's a little bit different for Cleef. If you were going for more of a crit rate build for Cleef, then I suggest you get the Foggy Prison 4 set. If you're trying to just be super duper tank Cleef, then you can go for the White Shadow Castle set which gives HP. However, Foggy Prison for both is good because it does increase the summoner's defense by 250. But if you're just crazy and go all out attack build Cleef, you can go the Naraka 4 piece for summoner attack. Some people are crazy like that, but I'm not that kind of Cleef. But for my Cleef, I'm going Foggy Prison. For Cleef PvP, definitely go for the Twisted Marsh main staff. If you're trying to be that burst Cleef, go Ruin Temple staff if you're just trying to be a tanky Cleef. And for the sub weapon and the 4 piece, it's the same for PvE as it is for PvP for Cleef. So you don't need to have like two different sets or anything like that, which is good. White Castle sub weapon and you can go Foggy Prison 4 set. So you can kind of spread out the crafting materials needed. Alright, for Akina users. Akina for PvE is literally just all ruined set. You are supporting your monsters. Your monsters are doing the damage. It really just depends on what kind of team comp you're actually running. If you're running a defensive base build or an attack base build or HP, whatever. But really for PvE, just go all ruin for the staff, for the sub weapon for monster HP, and then for the four piece, which increases monster's defense. So you got monster attack on the staff, monster defense, and monster HP on all your ruin gear. But Kina PvP, you definitely still stay with the Ruin Temple staff, but then you want to switch over for the 4 set and the sub weapon to be Twisted Marsh. The Twisted Marsh sub weapon increases damage dealt by monsters in PvP, and the 4 set, your monsters take decreased damage in PvP. And like I said, it's all about your monsters when you play as Kina. So those are the pieces of gear for your summoner that you should focus on. But since we're on the topic of crafting, Let's talk about outfits real quick. For Orbia, make sure to craft every single piece that gives Orbia stats. This will help her survive and this will help her do more damage and increase that power level. I'm slacking on outfits kinda, plus it's free to play life, right? Make sure to craft the new semester set, the balancer set, the dragon wrath set, the top chef set, buy the hot spring warmth set if you want to, I really want to, but I can't. It's against my morals. The full moonlight set. And for PvP, the blue flame set, which requires you to farm Baphomet. That is the hero area boss. These are the same outfits that you want to craft on Cleef and Kina as well. However, with Kina, I suggest crafting for your monsters outfits first. Mainly your attack ones and probably like a knight warrior one. Whoever you are using as a front line. Because for Kina, you are the support for your monsters. Your monsters are pretty much doing everything for you. So if you're using Teor with Kina, you might want to craft the Masterpiece set first. Or Bulldozer, you might want to do the Grassland Dew set first. If you're using Sekhmet, Madness Research set, Karambit, the Water Activity set. You see where I'm getting at here? 
But if you are focused on PvP, make sure to do the Blue Flame set. It is a grind. And currently the times for Baphomet are not in favor for me. Midnight on a weekday for an almost 40 year old. Not cool, bro. Not only crafting outfits though, but these are the outfits that you should be on the lookout for. For the Brawl Shop, you should start getting your outfit there that will increase your summoner stats. And for the other outfits that are in Guild Shop, Ascension Shop, Galago Shop, Moon Shadow Shop, make sure to shop for those later, depending on what monsters you are using in your team comp. Each of those outfits could maybe benefit your team in some way. Like if you're using Warriors, then it's HP increased by 579. Just make sure to go in your shop and see if that outfit is worth it for you. But that's it for today's video. I hope this guide in crafting gear helps you. If you like all my videos and like my content, sub, like, ding a bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.